I'm Craig Follenkamp for Army High School. Fish Report Live starts now. Coming to you live from Studio F in Rushi, Ohio, it's the Fish Report Live Show with your hosts, Craig Fissinger and Ken Francis. Welcome everyone to another Fish Report Live. It is Wednesday night, February 6th. My name is Craig Fissinger. That's Ken Francis. TK and Heavy D are both back this week, back in our sound room again. However, Ken, we are missing our water boy, Ross. He's at the Flyers game tonight, the Dayton Flyers game. Uh, I guess he deserves a week off every once in a while too, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. And you know what? He must have done a good job because actually the Flyers won tonight. So uh, Atlantic 10 wins have been tough for them to get this year. And uh, Ross, you did a good job. All right, Ken, well, we got a action-packed night tonight, all kinds of stuff to talk about, including a couple big interviews, don't we? A couple nice interviews. We've got Fort Laramie head basketball coach Carl Ratterman. Uh, nice of him to take some time out of uh, his busy schedule the other night and talk to us. And then live on the telephone, Craig, we've covered a little bit of cheerleading this year. We've showed a lot of highlights. We've got Rushi's very own Brandy Flippo. Uh, to talk to us about cheerleading. So yeah. it should be a fun night. Looking forward to that. And we're going to be breaking down girls tournament brackets tonight. Uh, we also have big news on national signing day, which was today. We're going to get to that at the end of the show, but uh, just like we do every week, Ken, let's get to that weekly trivia question. What do you have for me tonight? All right. Well, speaking of national signing day, Craig, it was actually established in 1981. All right. Okay. So, so this has been going on for quite a while. Prior to 1981, these conferences used to, it was kind of a free-for-all. You know, you kind of signed whenever you wanted to, uh, depending on what conference you were planning on joining. So uh, now, typically the first Wednesday of every February is known as National High School Signing Day. And these athletes, high school athletes, can sign for, for basically fall sports, whether it's football, cross-country, track, uh, volleyball, different things like that. So anyways, back in 1981, which NCAA sport established National Signing Day? Okay. So there was one sport that actually said, okay, we're going to have National Signing Day. What sport was it? Was it basketball, football, or soccer? Basketball, football, or soccer. All right. All right. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to have to ask for a little help on that one because I don't remember 1981 very well. Yeah, and you've been on a cold streak, too. I have, so i, I got to get tonight's right. Uh, we'll get to that answer at the end of the show and see how I do. Uh, but let's get things started, Ken, by talking some girls basketball. Uh, the Shelby County League, let's check out the standings uh, and see where we're at this week. Uh, big game last night that could have made the, the standings real interesting. Yeah, it was. Big game last night. Uh, the Anna Rockets invaded Rushi's Clercy Nouveau Gymnasium. And I tell you what, the Lady Raiders battled them hard. They gave Anna everything they wanted, you know, took them right down basically to the final buzzer. And, uh, you know, big win, though, for the Rockets. They, they prevailed. They clinched a tie of the Shelby County League standings. And, uh, you know, but they got one big game left facing the Fort Laramie Redskins, who are at 10-1 and one. the last two times these teams got together. Uh, and I actually won in overtime on a last second shot. So that game will be Thursday night. Uh, you know, Anna, like I said, has already clinched a share of the league title, but a lot riding on that particular game. All right. And let's check out the uh, Thursday night schedule, see what games we have coming up. Well, we got Fairlawn uh, traveling to Jackson Center. Uh, the big game, like we said, Anna. Uh, we'll be traveling to Fort Laramie and Rushi uh, taking on the Houston Wildcats, which will be a nice tune-up actually for tournament play for some of these teams. All right, Ken, and uh, I want to talk a little tournament talk, and I'm actually going to go to the boys in the back for this one. Uh, guys, uh, why, don't we, uh, why don't we bring up that um, uh, 
Sydney bracket. I want to bring the Sydney bracket up and then let's take a look at that. Uh, now, I think we all understand how Fort Laramie got the number one seed in that last uh, Sunday when they did the, the selections, but uh, I kind of expected Rushi to get the number two seed, uh, but Mechanicsburg got that number two seed. And I want to ask you guys back there, why? Yeah, no big surprise on number one, you know, with Fort Laramie being led by junior stud Darian Rose. Uh, but uh, Rushi, you know, they beat the teams they were supposed to beat this year. Uh, they were right in the games with a, a lot of top competition. Ken, you hit the nail right on the head with, with Anna. They were right in that game down to the wire, and I think that game really got them uh, focused and ready for tournament. Uh, you got to look past the seeds at this point. Th you throw those right out the window, it's time to start playing ball in tournament. TK, what do you think about Mechanicsburg? Yeah, Craig, you mentioned they did get that number two seed. Um, I, I think this just went down to the uh, actual actual record and uh, the fact they only lost two games to Division Three Greenview. So you look at that, and I think just you go look at the record, and that's how they got it. Um, at this point, even though strength of strength of uh, schedule may be a little bit different, everybody landed where they're supposed to. Larmy got number one. Rushi would have played the same place they are, whether they got two or three. So at this point, I don't think it really matters that much. Let's start playing basketball. Well, you know you're right there, guys. And, and another interesting bracket because the, the the team that comes out of this district ultimately will end up in in the regional with these other local teams, and that's the Coldwater Division Four bracket. Can we take a quick look at that particular bracket? All right, you know here we've got a lot of Max schools uh, battling it out, and, and up in the North uh, West District, they actually do that a little bit different. But uh, they play only two, basically two rounds of sectional play, and then they go directly into a regional bracket, or I'm sorry, into a district bracket in which they have a district semifinal and a district final. So the number of total games is the same. It's just kind of the format is set up a little bit different. But who do you guys see coming out of this uh, sectional right here? Well, Ken, Craig, I've been looking at that. Uh, it, it's kind of a toss-up, really. But uh, I'm saying right now it's who gets hot, and I think uh, New Knoxville is going to be the hotter team coming out of there. Uh, New Knoxville's taken uh, – they took a win against Goshen early in the season, uh, beat them by six, I think it was. Marion Local beat New Knoxville early in the season. But uh, New Knox or rather Marion Local has been up and down. Uh, again, I think it's who's hot, and right now I think it's New Knoxville's hot. I see them coming out of that group. All right, guys, and I got one more I want to talk about. That's that D3 uh, Tip City bracket. And, uh, you know, Anna whooped on Miami East earlier this year, but uh, uh, Miami, Miami East actually ended up with the number one seed over Anna. And I want to ask, what, what's going on with that? Yeah, you know, that's, that's a little bit odd. Anna's actually beat Miami East the last three times they've played. And uh, if it's Anna and Miami East again, they would meet in the regional semis this year. Uh, to do that, Anna would have to get by Versailles. Uh, most likely in the sectional finals. And the last time Anna and Versailles played was back in the 2010 regional finals when Versailles won in OT 41-40. So, again, you know, you take the seeds, and they're good for, for getting you into the tournament, but at that point you got to throw them right out the window and start playing ball. Well, you know, I, I agree with you there. And, and speaking of just a little thing on that Division three, you know, an interesting matchup fairly early in, in the tournament uh, could pit Anna and Versailles. You know, two very good basketball teams. I've actually seen them both play. And uh, to be honest with you, you know, uh, that'll, be, that'll be a real interesting matchup. I think you're going to have a contrast in styles there with Anna's pressure defense, constantly pressuring, uh, the, you know, the Versailles Tigers. And I'm not so sure Versailles can handle that pressure. You know, they, they've got a great inside game. They've got some good outside shooters. But, uh, you know, I've seen Versailles play, and, and uh, you know, it's going to be a matter of who can control the tempo in that one. Yeah, but, I'm looking forward to that match myself, Ken, and uh, that, that should be a good one if, if that's how it works out. So, All right, well, that's going to do it for our girls' basketball talk tonight, Ken, and we're going to um, we're gonna talk a different girls' sport. We're going to switch from basketball to cheerleading, and, and like you said at the top of the show, we've been uh, spotlighting or featuring some of the local cheering teams uh, here recently, and uh, last uh, Sunday was actually a big day for some local cheerleading squads, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Last Sunday, uh, the regional cheering competition took place down in Springboro High School. And uh, it, it was interesting. There was tons of teams there. And uh, they have a couple different divisions or classes, you know. And I'm not for sure what those classes or divisions are. But the main thing I do know, Craig, is that there was four local teams that actually came out of that regional and advanced to the state level. And those are Rushi, Fort Laramie, New Bremen, and Farallon. So congratulations to those four teams and their cheerleading uh, advisors and coaches. And uh, what's great, Craig, is I think we're going to have one of them coaches on the phone with us here in just a moment. 
Yeah, you know, I, it sounds to me like uh, just to hear you talk there, Ken, I'm not real confident that you know a whole heck of a lot about cheerleading. And I know one thing for sure, I don't know a whole heck of a lot about cheerleading, but I know one person that does know a lot about cheerleading is uh, Rushi's own coach, Brandy Flippo. And, and I believe we have her on the phone right now. Uh, Brandy, uh, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, first of all, I, I want you to straighten me out. I called you a cheerleading coach, and I've heard cheerleading coach, cheerleading advisor. W what exactly is your title? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure there is an official title. Um, they've been called both. I'm fine with either one. I think it's just shifted what the coach does and what the advisor used to do. I think the advisor, um, I think the advisor used to kind of be the adult supervision of the group in the years past, and I think now I look at myself more as a coach because I'm very hands-on with the girls, but um, you can call me either one. I don't mind. All right. Well, I'm going to refer to you as a coach tonight. That's uh, that's how I see it. But anyway, congrats on uh, a great performance last Sunday. Like I just said, you guys qualified for the uh, for the state competition. Uh, can you tell us where state's at and, and when it is? Uh, state is at um, the St. John Arena at Ohio State University, and it is on um, Sunday, March 3rd. Um, it's really exciting. There's a lot of amazing talent. Um, and there's tons of people. It's 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 awesome to be a part of it. All right. Well, I know some there's some of our viewers out there right now probably saying, "Well, wait a second. They, they're 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 in regionals. They're going to state. I didn't know these cheerleaders were even in a tournament." So, can you explain to us a little bit what this is all about? Sure. Um, cheerleading is totally different than any other sport. Obviously, um, it would be impossible to run um, a tournament for cheerleading because there's judges and it's, and, and it's kind of judgmental. Um, so years ago, the Ohio um, Association of Secondary School Administrators, and we just say OASSA for short, um, they created this competition for all of the Ohio schools, and it's really given um, our athletes, you know, as cheerleaders, a chance to work towards a championship title, just like every other, you know, every other sport does. Brandy, hi. This is Ken Francis, and I've got a couple questions for you. Uh, Craig and I both have daughters on your cheering squad, and I just want to be the, uh, you know, speak for them. But uh, they just love having you as their coach. So thanks for all the hard work you put in uh, uh, to this team. But no uh, problem. Could could you tell us who uh, some of the rest of the girls are on this cheering squad? We got actually a team photo of them showing right now on the screen. Oh, um, sure. We have um, the seniors are uh, Gina Barlogi, Alexa Count. Haley Dews, uh, Lauren Francis, Abby Gubo, and Taylor Magato. And then I have two juniors, uh, Taylor Borchers and Kirsten Boyzard. My sophomores are uh, Jamie Bacher, Hannah Bornhorst, Emily Borchers, and Kelsey Koverman. And I have two freshmen, Ellie Fissinger and Carissa Boyzard. They're a great group of girls to work with. Well, Brandy, I want to tell you, uh, you know, you do a great job with them again. And uh, a few years back, I remember when, when Brandy was a cheerleader for the Rushi Raiders. Uh, what other background do you have in cheering, and how has cheering changed since you were actually a cheerleader for Rushi? Um, I would say that um, the biggest changes that I've seen are um, that it's become way more competitive than when I was in school, and it is um, a lot more tumbling has been incorporated you know, into the sport. Um, my history, you know, in my experience is, um, you know, I was a four-year varsity cheerleader at Rushi. I won't say what years they were. Um, I competed two times at um, nationals my junior and senior year. Um, my senior year, I didn't do so great, but my junior year, I finished 11th at the national competition. Um, when I graduated from Rushi, I went to Ball State, and uh, I tried out for the dance team. I was not a tumbler, so making it at the college level and cheer, I knew was kind of out for me. Um, I was fortunate to be one of the 14, 14 out of about 80 girls that tried out every year um, to make the squad, and it was an awesome experience, um, something that definitely has helped me with my coaching, you know, um, now. So I was blessed to be a part of that. Well, you no, know, Brandy, your team competes during the basketball season, uh, but you also do a lot of work with this sport during the summer. Explain to our listeners out there, you know, what the girls do over the summer to get them ready for the basketball season. Uh, that's a good question. Um, we definitely have to get together during the summer. My girls um, are all very athletic. I think each and every one of them was involved in a fall sport, and the majority of them are involved in a spring sport. So other than the winter season, I don't have much hands-on time with them. So the, during the summer, we get together, and we try to um, attend a camp, um, an overnight camp somewhere if it works out, and that um, allows us to learn a lot of new material. It um, betters our skills 
overall skills as cheerleaders. Um, it's also an incredible team bonding experience for the girls and myself, which is very important in the sport of cheerleading. Um, we compete during the summer, so we start working right away. You know, once school's out, I give them a couple weeks off, and we um, we start working right away on competition routine and working on um, anything that we might be able to use during the season. So once the season starts up, we don't feel the pressure, um, you know, to get everything crammed into practices when we don't necessarily have the gym time. And um, for anybody that comes to Rushi Gym, you know, for any kind of a game or sporting event, sees the signs on the walls. Um, we work we work hard on those during the summer. I think last year we put in a total of at least 150 total work hours into those signs. Um, the girls take a lot of pride in it. So that's another one of the things we work on in the summer as well. All right, Brandy. Hey, listen, last question. Now, rusi has got kind of a history of uh, moving cheerleaders on to the next level. Like you just said, you uh, you danced at Ball State uh, back in the day. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, Ken and I actually had uh, Rushi alum Vanya Brand on, who now cheers for the Cincinnati Bengals. And uh, I know there's a junior over at Wright State right now by the name of Caitlin Owen, I believe. She's uh-huh. a cheerleader cheerleader for the Wright State Raiders. So I want to ask you, what, uh, why has Rushi been so successful in, uh, in, in cheer recently? Um, I think it's, you know, the kind, of, the kind of kids we have at Rushi. I think that um, we have a lot of individuals that, um, have, that I've coached recently, and I'm sure has been this way in the past, you know, that just have a lot of passion for the sport. They just absolutely love it. Um, they're very dedicated, um, and they're, they're hard workers. And I think that... Um, you know, a lot of athletes in our area work hard in hopes to compete and play at a higher level once they graduate from high school, and I think my cheerleaders are no exception. Um, I think it's a combination of, you know, those things, the passion, dedication, drive, you know, that these girls have, as well as, um, and almost just as important, the amazing support, you know, that the athletes get from their parents, and just the community on a whole. The girls are just overwhelmed um, each game, you know, with the feedback from the fans, so I think that helps them want to uh, potentially pursue it even further. All right. Well, listen, that was great stuff, Brandy. Hey, we want to thank you for taking a few minutes to join us tonight. Uh, well, thanks um, for having me. Yeah, and educating us about your sport. Uh, keep up the good work, and, and thanks for joining us on Fish Report Live tonight. Th- thank you. Thanks, Brandy. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. All right. That was uh, Rushi cheerleading coach Brandy Filippo. And, uh, Ken, they do a heck of a job. Uh, actually, as we go to break here, we're going to see that performance uh, from uh, a game last week. It was the same performance they did on Sunday night. So enjoy this, and we'll be right back. Yeah, it's 
All right, welcome back, everyone, to the second half of Fish Report Live. And, uh, Ken, we saw a little bit of them cheerleaders as we went into the break. And uh, I'm going to have the full version tomorrow on the Fish Report website. So if you want to see the extended version of that cheer, uh, tune in tomorrow, and we'll have, the, uh, like I said, the full version on the website. All right, Ken, we were talking girls basketball before the break. We were talking girls cheerleading. Uh, we're going to change gears now, talk a little boys basketball. And uh, we're going to go right to those SCL standings. And before we get to a big Friday night of ball, we're going to see where we're at right now. So why don't you go over the standings for us? Well, you know, last weekend was a big weekend for the Jackson Center Tigers. Uh, they moved to 9-1 and one on the year in the league and actually wrapped up their second consecutive uh, Shelby County League championship. So congratulations to Coach Elkert and his squad up there in Jackson Center. You know, the, the way the rest of these standings look, uh, you know, a lot of balance in the team. I mean, in the league, you've got your second place team is only a game over 500. So um, just a lot of balance. It's been that way all year. And, you know, what this really is going to look forward to is a, a very interesting sectional basketball tournament at Pickles Garbery Gymnasium because, uh, you know, Jackson Center is obviously a 9-1. and one. They've won a lot of close games. And, uh, but there's not a team in this league that uh, can't compete with anybody else. All right, and let's get to that big schedule of games coming up Friday night. Well, Friday night, uh, Anna will be traveling to Lehman for a big non-league battle there. And, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, games here got bearing on seating yet on the upcoming draw on Sunday afternoon. So Bakken's will be traveling to Farallon, Jackson Center, at Fort Laramie, trying to avenge its only loss, uh, league loss of the season. And then Rushi traveling to Houston, which will also be a very entertaining game. So another big night of Shelby County League boys basketball on schedule. All right, and you mentioned that uh, that Jackson Center at, at, at Larmy game. I, like you said, you know that's going to be a big one. And uh, uh, why don't you give us a little recap of what happened last time? Well, you know, the last two team time these two teams got back together was on December the 28th during the holidays, and it was a great basketball game. Fort Lormy actually came out on top, winning the game 48-46. to 46. Uh, Fort Lormy controlled the tempo of that entire game, kind of held uh, Jackson Center in check, played good defense, and, and you know, it was just a, a typical Shelby County, uh, sh you know, fight and uh, you know Fort Laramie came out on top it was an interesting weekend actually because Jackson Center who has two losses all year actually suffered losses on that Friday and Saturday night Saturday night they turned around got beat by Columbus Grove so uh, you know we'll see once it's still a big game you know even though the league standing has been uh, the champions already been crowned uh, make for an interesting basketball game yeah, Jackson Center actually has a double weekend this weekend as well. They play, play Lima Temple Christian on Saturday night. No, don't know much about that team, but I'm sure uh, all Jackson's uh, attention is going to be focused on uh, on Fort Laramie for Friday night. And you and I both got a chance to go to Fort Laramie on, uh, on Monday night, got a chance to watch a little bit of their practice and also talk to Coach Raderman after practice was over. And uh, we asked him specifically about uh, Jackson Center already wrapping up the title and how important this game really was on Friday. And let's check out and see what he had to say. Fish Report Live here with Fort Laramie Redskins head coach Carl Ratterman. And coach, you got uh, Jackson Center coming up this Friday. However, they already wrapped up the league title this past weekend. Does that make this game uh, coming up any less important for you? We just want to try to get things going in the right direction, uh, you know, going into the tournament. So, you know, it will be a big game for us. I'm sure it's a big game for them because, uh, you know, we, we were able to beat them the last time. But, um, you know, we just want to get things going, like I said, in the right direction to try to get on a positive roll uh, heading into the tournament. Speaking of that last game, you're the only team in the Shelby County League to beat the Tigers this season. Uh, that was a close game, 48-46. Uh, what were the keys to the victory in that game? We came out with a lot of energy, and, and we had really good focus that night, and we were able to s sustain that throughout. And that was really important. And, and, the, and the games this year, where we've been effective, we were able to do that. We've had some inconsistencies with that throughout the season, but we had to play really good defense, and uh, and uh, we were very opportunistic offensively. So uh, we know that we're going to have to do the same things this Friday if we want to have success against them. One of the positives to this season has to be the emergence of sophomore Grant Overding. And he started out the year on JV, moved up to varsity. He's been the leading scorer in several of your games. What kind of potential does he have the rest of this season and the years to come? Yeah, Grant gained a lot of confidence playing JV. Uh, he, along with uh, Devin Braun, um, started the year at the JV level, and they're both playing varsity for us now. But uh, he steadily improved uh, his defense um, and offensively, like I said, gained some confidence. But he does some nice things for us inside. He, he can alter some shots. 
he's a decent rebounder for us, and, and yeah, he's a pretty good offensive post player for us. So he's doing some positive things for us, and uh, hopefully he can continue to improve. Um, you say in the future, what can he do? It'd be nice if he could grow a little bit. But uh, yeah, we, we look for big things out of those two guys uh, as, as we move forward. And the last question is about uh, one of your seniors, Seth Yozzi. His career is winding down for the Redskins. I want to ask what he's meant to, to your team and, and, and to the school. Yeah, Seth has been a very consistent performer for us this year. Um, the other week against Houston, I think it might have been his low point total of the year. And he had four points, but it might have been one of his best games he's played for us because he did so many other things well. So he understands his role of being able to do many things out on the floor to help us win. And sometimes then it's not always scoring, but he's, uh, he's an excellent leader for us, leads by example every day in practice. I mean, when, you're, when, when your best player is your hardest worker, and Seth is one of our hardest workers, I mean, that kind of sets the tone for everyone else in practice. So that's, that's we're going to really miss that with Seth. And uh, this, his leadership, his uh, overall presence this year has been fantastic. All right, Ken, and that was uh, Fort Army head coach Carl Ratterman. And actually, during that video, we got a text from uh, Craig Fullenkamp, one of his players, who you saw at the top of the show uh, bringing us in there. And uh, Craig wanted a little shout-out. So, Craig, thanks for watching tonight. Yeah, you know, I, I tell you what, first of all, uh, Coach Rodderman, you know, great job on the interview there. I thought he hit uh, home on a lot of key points, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, his younger players, when it comes to uh, what it takes to beat Jackson Center and different things like that. So appreciate him taking time out of his busy schedule. I know, uh, you know, with coaching and everything, it, it's just got to be very hectic. But, uh, you know, again, thank you very much. And as far as Craig or Camp goes, he wants a shout out. How about we give him a T-shirt? Hey, that works. All right, we'll give him a T-shirt. We so, haven't given out I, any T-shirts in a while. No, so. we haven't. And I know a guy that works in the sound room that can probably get it to him. So. All right, good deal. All right, well, that's going to do it for, for a boys' basketball talk, Ken, and about to do it for, for tonight. However, like I said at the top of the show, it was National Signing Day all over the nation. High school seniors that are continuing their athletic careers in college signed to uh, – what schools they're going to be going at. And we actually had one of those right here in Rushi. I know it's a gal you know very well, and that's uh, our own Lauren Francis. And let's check out the video on that, guys. There she is uh, signing uh, to uh, run at Xavier University. She'll be running cross-country track uh, over there. And it, I know it's an exciting day for, uh, for Rushi, for her, and uh, I know for a lot of people. And uh, um, it was just uh, the ceremony was there at the school and, and a lot of family and friends there. And actually one of Lauren's competitors and uh, good friends, Meg Vogel, there she is over there at West Liberty. She signed today to run at Penn State. So uh, congratulations to both of those two. And Ken, I want to ask you, you know, I know there's a lot of seniors right now that uh, haven't decided where they're going to go. I, I want to know how important it is to make that decision now on National Signing Day, especially when you have a spring sport like track or baseball or softball coming coming up. You know, I think it's uh, it's very important that they do make the decision and sign as early as possible because it takes a, a big burden off of their shoulders. You know, a lot of these uh, athletes, you know, they just want to focus on their upcoming sport. And if they can get that signing day behind him, make that college choice, I think that's very important. However, on the other hand, you do want to make sure that you're making the proper choice and not rush into anything. These uh, student athletes have to be students first, Craig. And, you know, it's very important that they look at these schools academically and say, okay, I'm going to be very happy academically at this school if I don't play the sport because you never know what's going to happen. So you want to make sure that you can, uh, you'll be happy for four years at that university and then say, okay, I'll be happy here. Okay, I'm going to run cross country. I'm going to play football or whatever it might be. That has to be your secondary option. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Ken. Um, that's uh, You're exactly right on that. So, so. But, uh, you know, like you said, a big congratulations out to those two girls right there. And, uh, you know, I know the support that they've gotten over the years, uh, whether from family, friends, and especially from their coaches and their teammates, has just, has just been phenomenal. So congratulations to them. You know, a few other ones, you know, you've got Sam Prakel, a guy that we've talked to a lot, signing for probably the marquee track cross-country team in the country. Uh, he's going to be a duck out in Oregon. So That's congratulations right. to Sam Prakel. And, uh, you know, just uh, there's a lot of local athletes. We could go on and on. But, uh, you know, uh, to all of them, good job and good luck to you. Well, I'm looking forward to some uh, future trips down to Xavier and also out to Happy Valley. Not sure I'm going to make it out to Oregon, but uh, – uh, those other two, I, I'll try to get to that's in, in right. the future. All right, Ken, well, that's going to do it for us tonight. However, we still have that trivia question. Give it to me again here and give me my choices. All right, well, back in 1981, 
when uh, National Signing Day was actually established, there was one NCAA sport that actually uh, made all this possible. All right. All right. So one NCAA sport made National Signing Day prominent like it is today. Was that sport basketball, football, or soccer? Boy, I'm look. I, I got to get off this cold streak. I'm on can. I'm looking for help here. I didn't get any help tonight on Twitter, so uh, I no guess help. I'm going to have to uh, guess on this one myself. And 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 football seems to be the big sport uh, uh, with signing, so I'm going to go with football. You know what, Craig? Back in 1981, the Southeastern Conference. You ever hear of the SEC, right? Sure, yeah. Pretty good in football, They're right? All right. They're all you right. know what they said? You know what? It's time we have signing day. The SEC football program said, enough of this uh, signing whenever you want. So the correct answer is football. All right, I'm off to snide and back on a winning streak. That's right. One week winning, one week winning streak. All right. Well, that's uh, that's going to do it for us here tonight. Uh, special thanks to Coach Ratterman for coming on, the uh, doing the interview with us, and also for Brandy Flippo for coming on live with us tonight. Uh, uh, for the guys in the back and for Ken, uh, thanks for watching. We'll be on again next week, same time and same place. Until then, have a great rest of the week, everyone, and good night. From Studio F in Rushi, Ohio, for Ken Francis, Craig Kissinger, and TK, this is Heavy D signing off saying good night and good fishing. <laughs>